and he was at a lady's house and they cut his hair, his mom and his hair. Well, this lady, I was talking to her, and he said, he said, I had just said to her, I wish the, uh, the prophet called or the bishop called, whatever he called me. I ain't in all that, but you know what I'm saying. They called whatever. He said, and by that time, he said, if I run, I look down at you. So this lady's coming here, I said, and I'm telling him about the, and he's coming, he said, you know what that lady just said to me? I said, oh, she said, the Lord showed her that's a warehouse of miracles. Oh, so I ain't no more seeing it. And then I said, well, I don't know this lady, but put the lady on the phone. So the lady gets on the phone, I start prophesying to that woman, and I was telling her about the seed. Now, I didn't know she sowed the seed in their life, but I was telling her about the seed that she sowed. She said, how do you know I sowed the seed? I said, because Spirit told me. I said, he said, he's going to multiply a thousand fold. Well, I'm going to prophesy over it, and Dr. Bar got on the phone. I said, son, he said, I'm going to tell you the truth. He said, everything you said that woman, we had just said. He said, that's confirmation of that. So I'm telling you, you're in the right place at the right time to get what you need. Now, a lot of times when we say we're in the warehouse, it almost like this top comes off here, and I walk through a warehouse, and there's legs, there's eyes, there's kidneys, and, and his son got a kidney. And all kinds of miracles was happening. So I'm telling you just like this morning about them. If you're in this service this morning, and there's something in your life now, it might not be nothing wrong with your body, but you, it, it might be something your mind messed up. God can heal your mind. It might be, uh, it could be finances, it could be children, it could be a marriage, it could be either. God's in the healing business to touch your life. Yeah. So what I'm asking you to do when you come in here, from here on out or whatever, claim that miracle for God and let God move in your life this morning yeah. and touch your life. Because if you don't claim it, guess what's going to happen? It's just going to hang there. Anybody remember the old, like my granddad used to have a smokehouse? Yeah. You know, some, and some of you people don't know what a smokehouse is. You, you know what Pippin Wiggly is. You don't know about a smokehouse. You know what Pippin Wiggly is. But my granddad used to have a smokehouse. There'd be stuff hanging there, you know, sausage and ham. and be cured out. And he'd just get some and let it go, you know. But God has moved in our lives this morning to do something. Now, he's already moved. Now, you know, if you don't get anything, he's already moved on this family. Yeah. He's getting ready to move on you this morning. He's already setting you up for the miracle. I don't, I'm not ministering this morning, but you know what? He's, he's got something he needs to say this morning, so we're going to let him say something this morning. He's coming. But I don't know what he's saying, but I'm pretty sure it's going to go along with what we're saying this morning. And the presence of God, listen, if you can get in the river, God is getting ready to invade your life this morning. How many need something from God? Come on, man, if you really need something, God asked him. Yeah. Some people, you know, I find, you know what I find out in lately? People don't ask him for nothing. You act like, we act like, you know, if I, you know, you ask me, we ask for, uh, you go to a restaurant, you ask the lady to bring some tea, don't you? Yeah. Come on now, you ain't gonna sit there and not get no tea and no drink, and we sure ain't going to our back not get no, uh, what is it? Rocket. If you ain't get no rocket, forget it. But I'm telling you this morning, claim the miracle even for your family. Claim, reach out of the storeroom of heaven and the warehouse of God and let God move. Because see, this, year, this ministry is getting ready to take on a whole new facet. And you're going to see the miracles of God happen. They're happening as we're talking. God is walking on the earth. The glory of God is moving on the earth to change things. Don't worry about what the White House is saying, even though we get, they say stuff. Don't worry about what this one's saying, but that's it. Worry about what God is saying over your life. But that's what's going to happen. Amen? Amen. Amen? Come on, man. Is everybody in agreement this morning? Amen. Amen. Praise team going to come this morning. You guys come on right here. And I just want to pronounce blessings upon the people this morning. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day, God. We give you praise. I ask you to touch each and every one of us. Touch my sins here this morning. Touch all my sisters and brothers in Christ. And brothers this morning, God. Had seen in a while. We thank you, God, for coming. We want to thank you for Facebook this morning. Thank you for YouTube. We just want to thank you, God, that you're moving on our lives this morning. And we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, welcome to pray. Put your hands together. Welcome to pray.
upset. When all of us just upset them. Go hear song, this is how I fight. And, and believe it or not, there's a way to fight. Not with your fist. Thank you. 
It's fresh. It's one thing I can't stand. It's still, still bread. Still bread. There was sour on his tongue. Still bread.
I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. We are so, so many times we surrounded by so many things that come against us, but we don't realize what our real surrounding is. Because I'm surrounded by him. Because I'm him. He's the one that protects me. Thank you, praise team. Acts, <laughs> Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Uh, uh, who, who, want, who, wants to, who wants to read it for me? Who, who wants to read it for me? Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Let's, let's get a backdrop a little bit. Let's see where this story is going. Go ahead. Now about, <coughs> now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to back certain of the church. Uh-huh. Next verse. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Hold up, let's stop. Now, King Herod said, I'm going to vex the church. I got a problem with the church because King Herod wanted votes. It's amazing what we'll do to get some votes. Wow. King Herod wanted the accommodation from the Jews. So King Herod said, I'm going out and prostitute and persecute the Christians. So he vexed them all and he killed James. He cut his head off with the sword. Now James, Peter, James, and John was the three that was in the Mount of Configuration when Jesus was transcended, right? And Peter was with James at the Mount of Transfiguration. But the king had came and he wanted all of them, but he only called John, I mean, I mean James, and then cut his head off. Now, me and me and uh, Elder, we buddies, and King after all of us, but he done caught Sam, and he done cut Sam's head off. Now he done caught me. And I'm in prison. So if the King done cut the buddy head off, what y'all think the next? Uh, y'all can speak up. My head too is going. Read on the next verse. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, uh -huh. he proceeded further to take Peter also. Uh -huh. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Read on. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in, in prison and delivered him to four Quartilians. Quartilians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Oh, let's stop right there. Now, Peter was in jail, and the king wasn't going to kill him until after Easter. He didn't want to kill him on a Passover. He, he, he didn't want to kill him then because he's, he said, that I don't want this commotion. But after Easter, I got your head, Peter. But after Easter, I got your head, Peter. Now, Peter's in jail. Now, Peter's in jail, and I can imagine Peter was saying something like this. Lord, the soldier came to get you. I cut his ear off. Lord, the day after Pentecost, when I preached, I preached so well that 5,000 souls plus women and children, they got saved. And, and Lord, don't you remember that I'm the one to say that I would never deny you? Ain't I the one that stood up for you? Am I not one of the same one that was at the Mount of Transfiguration when you were lifted up? And I saw you go with these big clouds, and an angel spoke to me, said the same way you saw Jesus go, the same way you come back. Uh, Peter was saying, Lord, what I do? Now you don't spend all your time serving God. And now you in prison and God just looked like he ain't gonna show up. 
I'm going to tell y'all what now. I don't think y'all are mad with God. Anybody ever be mad with God? Uh, if you be honest, anybody ever be mad with God? Because God did not do what we thought that he should do. I'm going to tell you what. Let me find an example. You serve God. You love God. And I know you do. But you ask God one thing. Lord, let my Rudy live a little longer. And you got what? Disappointed. But he told you in his word, it's going to be disappointment down the road. So don't think it's strange when you run into disappointment. That's part of the gospel. James had already, uh, James had already ran into disappointment. His head was already off. But, it, but in the Lord, to die is what? Gain. If you knew the scripture, to die is gain. To die might be gain, but Lord, I ain't ready to go right now. Uh, anybody ready to go right now? Wow, I didn't see no hands. But Peter was in, 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 he was in jail, and he done all this for God, and it looked like God had forsaken him. And we sing this song, and I'm so glad you got up. This is how I fight my battle fight. But Peter, uh, read on. I don't want to tell it all before we read it all. So you won't make it my words, but it's his word. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Uh, who was praying? The church. Uh, uh, Y'all scared to speak up. The church. Uh, say it loud. Who was praying? The church. See, when the church prayed, we can individually pray, pray but when the church prayed, when two or three are gathered together, I will be in the midst. But when there's 50 and 100 gathered together, right, agreeing and touching on the same thing, God will show up when the church pray. Amen. According to his will now. Let's don't get it twisted. But the church was praying while Peter was still in jail. Read on. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. And he was doing what? Sleeping. sleeping. No, he was worrying. Uh-uh, he was frustrated. He was doing what? Sleeping. This is how I fight my battles. Peter went and did what? Sleep. Between what? Two soldiers. Now, the Bible says there was four quaternions. A quaternion is four sets of set of four soldiers. It was four sets of them. So Peter had sixteen men guarding this one man in prison. And you find it important when you gotta have sixteen men to guard you. And at night when Peter slept, there was a man on this side he was chained to, and a man on the other side he was chained to. So you inside the prison, chained to two men. I ain't talking about they went to sleep and you slip out. You can't slip out because you chained to the soldier. We know my sister. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, uh -huh. bound with two chains. Come on. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. Okay. Two soldiers bound between two chains, and at the door was two more soldiers. And what they done was each one of them took, it was four of them, right? It's a 12 hour watch. Each one of them took a three hour watch. Three hours later, they changed what? They changed soldiers. Four more came in. Unchained one, chained back another. Because this joker is not getting out because I'm going to get my votes. It's amazing what we'll do for votes. I'm talking church and I'm talking world. It's amazing what we'll do for votes. It's amazing how low we'll drop for votes. Read on, my sister. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, uh -huh. and a light shined uh, in the what? A light. 
God is not darkness and there's no darkness in him. He is always the light. When God shows up, darkness has to do what? Flee. You don't believe in flee? Turn all the lights off. And hit the switch, turn back on. See where the darkness go. It flee. It runs away. Read on, my sister. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Listen. See, we want our problem to fall off, but we won't get up. The angel told Peter to rise up quickly, right? But as long as he was laying down, chains wouldn't fall off. Peter in the prison, laying between two soldiers, sleep. Now when you sleep, and somebody suddenly awake you, you ain't got time to think about a whole lot. You really ain't thinking about a whole lot. See, our biggest problem is, in what we do, we think too much. There's an angel beside me, and I'm trying to do what? Think too much. That's my major problem. Our major problem is we think too much. I don't even think. He says, get up, and the chains will fall off. All Peter had to do was get up. Read on. Give me, give me one more verse. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. Oh, hold on. He says, get up, and the chains fall off. When God tells you to do something, just do what he's saying. Don't try to analyze it. Don't try to categorize it. Just do what he say. Uh, we were supposed to sing a, a bunch of old songs this morning. But the Holy Ghost says, nope, stop. The water is drunk right now. Let's go a different direction. Uh, get up. Your chains will fall off. And gird yourself. Get up and put on one of your clothes. And let's go. Now, I call you. Marissa, I call you in the morning. About 8.30, and you probably gonna be asleep. About 8.30, 9 o'clock, you probably gonna be asleep. And I'll say, get up and put on your clothes, let's go. What you probably gonna say? <laughs> Where are we going? Mr. <laughs> Wall, why are you calling me so early in the morning? Is you crazy? I just went to sleep. Where are we going? Well, we going up, up, up down to Raleigh, and we gonna do such and such and such and such. Well, what are we going that for? She asked him all them questions, just like we asked her all them questions, instead of doing what? Just do. It. What God said, just do it. Luke 6 and 38, he says, give, then there's a comma. Why is there a comma when it says, give? Uh, put it up, and, 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 and uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a comma after give. See, we need to pay attention to detail, right? Luke 6 and 38. Let me make sure what's it. Yep. Give, and it shall be given to you. Press down, shake it together, and run it over, shall who? Me. Oh, money will fall out of the sky. If you give, you press it down, shake it together, and run it over. Shall me? Me will come up and say, The Lord told me to give you this. And then we know why. Because the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. But see, the thing is, we won't always have what? Comments. We won't analyze everything. The scripture said, Give, come, and it shall be given to you. But we got to make the first step, first step, first, right? Uh, anybody use GPS? See, 
on, on the GPS. Normally, if you put on normal mode, it give you one turn at a time. It say go 5.3 miles and make a right on Landfield Road. Okay? I'm going 5.3 miles, I'm gonna make a right on Landfield Road. But Landfield Road. But it also has a, a, a thing that says details. And the details might have seven different turns at one time. Guess what? I'm already mixed up. Do one thing at a time. Let me go 5.2 miles and turn right on Landfield Road, and then go 3.4 miles and turn to the left on Duke Road. Just give me one at a time. See, we want to analyze God, we want to see what God can do in the end. Just do the first thing. Give, and it shall be given to you. Not only give, but anything he asks you to do, just do that. Don't ask a whole bunch of questions. Peter didn't ask no questions. Get up and get dressed and don't ask where you're going. Just go. When the Lord wake you up, get up, get dressed, and don't ask where you're going. Just go. But we want to ask a whole, a whole lot of questions. Next scripture. Cast thy garment about thee uh -huh. and follow me. And, and he went out and followed him uh -huh. and was not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he was a vision. See, the whole time Peter was doing all this, he thought he was dreaming. He thought it was a vision. But in actuality, it was really true. That I'm about to get out of jail. And he didn't know not what he was doing. Now, when the angel wake me up, and say, you're about to get out of jail. I'm probably not going to do like Peter. I'm probably not going to put on no sandals or no clothes. If I ain't run out in my underwear, I'm gone. <laughs> See? Always analyzing stuff. That pastor Al's, I clap. Lord help his life. But if, but if I can get out of prison, I'm going to get out the fastest way, best way I can. Guess what? If, if, uh, uh, if, if you see my little white tush on the way out, so be it. I'm gone. Out of prison. Nobody wants to be locked up, especially Peter, when he had already seen his buddy's head get cut off. I already knew it. His other was named Judd. He got exiled on the Isle of Patmos. Where he go in a year? He wrote the book of Revelation. Because he wouldn't kill him. But we try to reason within ourselves. Instead of just do what God said, step by step. Line upon line, precept upon precept, step by step. Just do what he say. Uh, so it's a little treat. Uh, the Lord told me to tell you to give me five hundred dollars today. Yeah. If he told you that, would you do it? No questions. Just what? Do it. Uh, the, the Lord told you to take us a so and so to Raleigh in the morning because she need to go to the doctor. Don't ask no question. Just go take her. Uh, the Lord told you to go fill up his tank. Don't ask no question. Just go fill up his tank. But we got so many what? Questions. So many questions. We're trying to figure God out with my little mind. And with my little finite mind, I can never figure out God because he's bigger than all of us can ever think or imagine. Yes, yes. We, we know about this much about God, right. which is about enough to get us in trouble. I'm up here preaching in front of you. I'm saying about enough to get me in trouble. That's how big God is and how big gospel is. Read on, my sister. When they were past the first and the second ward, <laughs> They came unto the iron gate Come on. that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they uh, the iron gate, and the gate just opened. Now this gate was the gate to the prisoner, to the prison wall. Have y'all ever been by a prison? Right. Have y'all seen the iron gates? Right. It's a little bit of the gate, ain't it? No. 
No, it's a bit heavy, sturdy gate. And Peter got to the gate, and the gate just opened. If you will just obey, line upon line, word upon word, the gate will just open. You didn't got to reach out and touch it. The gate will just open for you. It'll open for your life. Uh, give me Deuteronomy 28. We're going to come back here. Deuteronomy 28. Uh, read, my sister. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee up oh. on high above all nations of the earth. If you do what? Just obey. Do not reason. Do not rationalize. With God and his word, just what? Obey. Well, I don't know whether I should do, or do this or not. Read the word. And obey. Deuteronomy 28, the first 14 verses are all verses about blessings that will come on you if you obey. But the next 54 verses is about the curses that come on you if you disobey. I uh, believe it's about six to eight verses in Deuteronomy 28. The first 14 are blessings, and the next and the last 54 are curses that will come upon you if you disobey. Right. Why are we continuing to disobey with all those curses? Why we do it? Why walk? Why won't, why won't walk just do what he say? Cause walk trying to use his own mind instead of getting the mind of Christ. Walk trying to use his own mind to walk just go to sleep and say, wake up. And the Lord tell me what to do. Go back to that last verse in uh, Acts 12. Deuteronomy 20. All those blessings shall come upon you. Now I can't tell you about the blessings unless I can tell you about the curses. It says, curse shall you be, curse shall be you be when you come in. Curse shall you be when you go out. Curse shall be your barns. Curse shall be your field. Curse shall be your children. Wow. The curses are probably three or four times more than the bigger than the, than, than the big blessings. Read on, my sister. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Oh, listen. He was following the angel, near the angel that left. Now, Peter, you are on your own. Peter, now you are on your own. See, Peter is the same one that when he saw Jesus, he said, Bid that I should come to you. And Peter stepped out on the water and walked with Jesus. There was 11 more disciples on the boat. None of them got out. But Peter had already walked out out on God on his own. And when the angel left, and he, he saw that he wasn't dreaming, it wasn't vision, a vision, it was reality that I'm out of prison, we out of the prison of our mind, that Peter could walk by himself, and, and he and Peter just began to think. Read on my sister. And when Peter was come to himself. Uh-oh, come to what? Himself. Sometimes we didn't come to ourselves. It was a part of a son. They said, Daddy, give me all my money. I'm tired of hanging around this farm with you. I'm going to a far city and I'm going to sow my royal oak. I'm going to party and party and party like it ain't no party. So, he, so, so, so the proper son went out to a far country and wasted all his inheritance that he did and saved up for him. He wasted it all. But until he was in the hall field, he eating corn husks and corn with, with the pigs in the pig field. Then he what? He, he don't like Peter. He came to himself. Yeah. See, sometimes we need to come to ourselves and realize that it's not about you, but it's about the God that's in you. Sometimes we need to come to ourselves. But when the prodigal son came to himself, he came back to, he says, listen, I would do better off than this if I was at my father's house being a servant. He said, my father's servants live better than this. I'm out here in a hall pen. Then the part of the son came back home. And when he came back home and when the father saw it, I was talking about a real father. A real father, no matter what you do, he won't reject you. A real father, no matter what you do, 
He won't turn his back on you. A real father, no matter what you do. See, I'm talking about this father, but I'm also talking about that father. A real father will not turn his back on you, right? But you got to come to yourself. You got to come to the reality that, uh, Charles, you got to say, I messed up. Excuse me, baby. <laughs> but I get excited. A real, a, a, a real person, when they come to himself, God, I messed up. And, and God, I come back to you. Yes, yes. And I don't have to, I don't care whether I got to get on my knees, or I got to cry, or I got to stuck up, but I messed up. And he brought me home saying, here I am, son, with my arms wide open. Come on back into my house. And I want to say while we're on Facebook, there's some of y'all watching right now, you done messed up. But it's all right. I messed up too. We all messed up. But thank God we got a loving father with his own wide open. It's waiting for us to come on home like the part of the Because so we all messed up. We all fall fall short of what? Of his glory. Wow. But he came to himself. But when he came to himself, he remembered one thing. Read on my sister. He said, Now I know of surety that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Is it, now I'm, I know of surety. I don't care what y'all say. I don't care what you think, brother. I'm saying. I don't care what you talk to the rest of the world. I'm saying. I don't care what kind of evil you say against me. I'm saying. And I don't care what nobody said, you can't convince me that I'm not. Because a thing called the Holy Ghost that resides on the inside. Amen. That bears witness with my spirit. That we are what? One. We used to be two. I used to be out there and God was where he was. But one day I came to my senses and said, God, I need you. Read on my sister. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, uh -huh. whose surname was Mark, Read where many were gathered together praying. Oh, now, see, when the angel left, and he came to himself, he remembered, this is the house of prayer. Why come John and, why come Peter didn't run off to Mexico? Or you? Or South America? He left prison and went where? To the house of prayer. The same folks that were praying for James they couldn't get off. They were praying for James but they couldn't get off. And Peter came back to, what? to the same house where he knew there was praying folks. Yeah. Now, if, 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 if you sick and you got trouble, don't go to nobody that don't, don't know how to pray. If I come to you and you don't know how to pray, I, I might well stay in the house and say my guess. Because I'm guessing worse off shape than I was when I left home. Matter of fact, I'm part of child crime and all the people are for you live. <laughs> Read on, my sister. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to Harkin named Rhoda. Rhoda. He, he knocked at the door, and a damsel came to the door. Read on. And when she knew Peter's voice, she, she, she what? She knew. Pass up. I'm at the door, and I'm knocking. And you know me so well that you know I knock. Read on, my sister. She opened not the gate. Oh, hold on. Pastor, I'm at the door knocking, and you know it's me knocking, and you know my voice, but you don't open the door. What kind of mess is that? I just got out of prison. The soldiers are probably coming, and you dragging. I, I can't even say it. You dragging your behind and won't open the door. And, 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 and listen. 
When Peter knocked, this is how Peter knocked. Peter didn't do nothing quietly. He was mouthy. He, he like a sister I know. I ain't calling her name, but she know. <laughs>
We know that the way we went wasn't possible for us, but we still be going down the same road. You knew that not tithing would not bless you, but you kept going down the same road. Until you lost almost everything you had. But, 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 but Pastor, when you when you got like Peter, and you got like Paul and son, and when you came to your senses, you came back and you said, God, I'm going to give you my task. Have to eat it. <laughs> All because we, we what? We knock on the wrong doors. And we continue knocking on doors that mean us no good. And, and uh, listen, I got, I got four girls. And I, and I have very little patience for me. And I have some daughters that are not my biological girls, right? That I have no patience for me in that when they knock on their door, they treat them like dirt. That when they knock on their door, I have very little patience for it. I might have asked the Holy Ghost to help me with patience for them. Because I, I, I don't. Because I got four of them. And I love every last one of them. And I don't want them knocking on the doors that mean them no good. But we what? Continue knocking on the wrong door. And we continue to end up with disappointment. We still end up with anguish. Because we continue to knock on the wrong doors. Put that sign down. I'm not going to throw it down. Knock on the door again. Now open the door. Now look on the back of the door. Now come on back out the door. See when you knock on the right door? There's a blessing waiting for you. See, see it's one thing that, that, that y'all gonna learn that to help me is, is a blessing. So all the ones that you raise your hand to help me, you come on down, Mama. You, you didn't get the blessing envelope. Oh no, sir. It's too late now. Cause you knocked on the wrong door. And I'm gonna say to everybody, okay, you may be seated. Enjoy your blessing. Go buy your steak. Amen. But so many times we knock on our uh, uh, pastor. Put your head down. It's too late. The, the opportunity was there. Uh, no, she could eat her steak by herself. And the whole time she eat it, she would be thinking about that handsome man that gave her the money to buy her steak. But Peter continued knocking. Uh -huh. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Oh, we are astonished when God showed up and do something. Why should we be astonished when God showed up and do something? When he, he said, I, I, I only count on thousand hills. I know the earth, the earth is mine and the food is there up. And, and every miracle belongs to me. So why are we so, so shocked, surprised, and astounded when God show up? We should expect that. Right, right. We are not normal. Yeah. I am not normal. That's right, Amen. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All of our villages, please excuse me. You see what I got to put up with. <laughs> well, he's still my pastor, and I love him. Because he got to come to his senses too. <laughs> we are astonished when God shows up like it was a miracle, but to God, it's an everyday thing. Yeah. What we call miracles to God is an everyday thing. Yeah. It's about like uh, you go up to what's the Bill Gates? Could you loan me $10? And ten dollars to Bill Gates is like a penny to us. We might just drop it out of our pocket and too lazy to reach down and pick it up, cause it's only a penny. 
But we come to God and we do like you said don't do. We don't ask for what we want. You don't see God broke. You don't see God without compassion. You don't see God without mercy. We, we don't see God without understanding or forgiveness. But we go to God like, wow, I can't ask for this. We don't want sister, we're almost done. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared until the Lord had brought them Come on. out of the prison. And he said, Go, shew these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Uh, he might have went to Mexico then. But right then, in the first place he had to get to was, was to the house of prayer. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm so glad that you're in the house of prayer today. You made a wise decision to come to the house of prayer. Amen. Now, now right now, he's knocking. He's knocking at your door. He's knocking at my door. At the same time he's knocking at my door, he's knocking at your door. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a story. I went to the doctor last Thursday and I got angry. I got angry because my wife's appointment was at 3.30. And my apartment was at 345. And her apartment was on the inside. And I had to sit on the outside and talk on the phone to the same doctor she talking to. And 10 minutes before I got there, it says, when you get 10 or 15 minutes from the place, just give us a call. Okay? I gave him a call. When you get here, call me back outside. So I called him back outside. And it took 14 minutes for them to answer the phone. And I'm here in the doctor's back here that far away from me. Just a wall separated us. Took that long for them to answer the phone. And I got ill. And when he did call me, I blasted whoever else the phone. Lord forgive me. Whoever else the phone, I blasted them. I said, don't make no sense. That I've been married over 40 years. And, and, and this has always been our doctor. And when my wife goes to the doctor, I go. And when I go to the doctor, she go. We've been married 40 years. I ain't seen nothing she ain't got, and she ain't seen nothing I ain't got. <laughs> I said, and now I'm outside, my wife inside, and you treat us like we got swine flu. Didn't, didn't, didn't curse or nothing, but I was saying how I feel. She says, but well, Mr. Blue, uh, uh, I talked to the doctor, and the doctor said you could come on inside. But I was still mad. My, my, my wife said my eyes had got, got a little red because I was mad. But when I walked in, my wife says, babe, don't get on the doctor. Most of her help and her effort. Wow. And she feeling a, a whole lot depressed today. And I sat on the edge of the bed and water ran down my face. My wife was in there and the doctor came in and the water was running down my face. And she said, what's wrong? I said, would nothing be wrong if I didn't care? I said, I was mad. But when I saw your countenance on where it's supposed to be, and she said, we family. I said, I couldn't be mad no more. I said, don't you worry about nothing. 
It's going to be all right now. But I'm saying this to say this to you all. I do stuff because I care. Girls, I taught y'all. 